Hello friends, I'm Commander Atul Kumar Rohatki in front of you once again on behalf of Isra Institute of Excellence. We have been delivering certain lectures and we have started a series of talks under the name of IIE Delhi HVAC talks. And today we are going to talk to you about chill water system. It is the fourth video uh, talk in this series of chill water system. And today a query from one of our alumni has also come who has requested for giving some brief, some ideas about how to estimate the total pump head that is required in a chill water system. So today we are going to talk about that and discuss this aspect. In our previous discussions on chill water system, we had discussed about estimation of chill water flow and selection of velocity for pipe sizing. What velocity we should take, we had discussed this. And this video comes after that and somehow it falls in the natural uh, series also. This video is about the chill water pump head estimation and uh, the total pump head that is required in the system should be equal to the summation of all the pressure losses that take place in the system. So in case if we break the entire system, entire piping system into several pipes into several sub pipes and pipes, then we calculate the pressure losses in each one of those pipes, each one of those sub pipes, and then we can sum it up to get the total pressure loss that is required. And that that is what, that is the pressure that the pump must create. We should remember at this time that unlike freshwater system or any other uh, piping system, fire main system, chill water system is a closed loop system. The other two examples that I gave, they are not closed loop system. The water gets consumed. It is only one way. But in chill water system, the water does not get consumed. Due to this, whatever water goes up, it has to come back also. And then when water is going up, it there, there is a pressure that is lost. And when water comes back, that pressure is gained again. So this is what we need to remember when we are sizing the uh, pumps and pressure losses. Pressure losses through pipes are directly proportional to the square of velocity of water. So the higher velocity that we choose, the more will be the pressure losses. So this is what we had discussed when we were talking about what should be the velocity of water through the pipes. And this I am repeating again that we should choose lower velocities and the maximum velocity as is specified in the box is 3 meters per second in pipes and that also should not normally be used normally we should remain well within 80 percent of that maximum when we use higher pressure in the system that leads to higher energy consumption that leads to more wear and tear and it creates more noise and it also necessitates bigger pump and therefore bigger and higher pump cost. This is all detrimental and we don't need to go in, uh, get into that. The pressure losses that take place and the pump should be capable of, with, uh, of overcoming all these pressure losses. Pressure losses are there in the cooling coil because it has got several bends and pipe uh, uh, when, when water is flowing through these pipes it uh, encounters a lot of resistance. There are a lot of system fittings like walls, different kinds of walls that are used, strainers that are used, elbows and T-pieces which are used in the system. They all, each one of them, they cause certain amount of pressure losses that we need to estimate and add it up, add up. The pipe length, the pipe length itself causes uh, pressure loss because uh, the pipe material, the inner material that will be causing frictional losses and the pressure loss is because of those frictional losses. How do we estimate now? Now to estimate, I told you that the entire piping system is broken into several small parts. And then we move from the pump to the farthest air handling unit, the entire piping system coming in that uh, line. And then coming back also from the air tube back to the suction uh, point of the pump. So the entire, whatever is the pressure loss in the entire movement from the pump to the AHU and back from AHU to the pump, all that pressure loss that it encounters, the water encounters, that much once added 
that should be the capacity of the pump that is the minimum capacity of the pump that is needed calculations are done from node to node we break the pipe into uh, several uh, pipes and small pipes and that breaking is done from node to node each uh, t piece each joint uh, each branching is a node each branching of pipe becomes a node the estimation process can also be uh, can also involve use of softwares there are softwares like pipenet which help in uh, sizing uh, the pipes which help in size, uh, in estimating the pressure loss and th that also helps in selecting a pump most suitable pump from a range of pumps uh, each branch of the pipe uh, becomes a node a pipe uh, may have one or more valves strainers or elbows but they do not necessarily become a node and every two p that becomes a node because every p there will be a branching taking place now i'm showing you a chart that shows that was used traditionally or that is used even today to estimate the pressure losses the red line the red horizontal line that line indicates that we should not be selecting a pipe above that and you will see that 3 meters per second uh, at around 20 uh, liters per second that is that is the maximum velocity that we can use normally we, we should not be using velocity above that we would also see on on the y axis there is a pressure drop in pascals per meter that is when water flows 1 meter what is the pressure drop that it will come across uh, on the x axis we have water flow rate and there there are certain lines which are say these lines going from left to right inclined ones 1.5 meters per second 1 meter per second 1.5 meters per second 2 meters per second so this gives velo uh, velocity of water and the line which is from uh, left to right uh, going up that gives the nominal diameter of the pipe that is to be used now if you see for example at uh, 1 liter per second at that flow rate and if i if i uh, use 1.5 meters per second 1.5 meters per second 1 meter per uh, 1 liter per second and 1.5 meters per second roughly the pressure loss is between 7 this is 60 and this is 70 around 67 68 that is the pressure loss in case if i double the velocity from 0.5 meters to 1 meter per second we can see that the pressure loss becomes close to 400 so this is what i was talking about that the resistance or pressure drop that is directly proportional to the square of the uh, velocity of water the next chart this chart shows the equivalent length of various pipeline fittings we use as i told you that uh, we we use several fittings in the system and in case if we are using a uh, let's say we are using a gate wall uh, we can see the gate wall is here the column for this gate wall and if we say that we are using 3 by 4 inch pipe 3 by 4 inch pipe is roughly around 20 mm 19 and or 20 mm pipe this will cause a pressure loss uh, which is equivalent to pipe traveling for a distance in feet and that is 0.3 feet so a 20 mm pipe or 3 by 4 inch pipe in that in case if we use a gate wall the pressure loss that it will cause that will be equivalent to making the water travel through the same pipe for a distance of 0.3 feet 0.3 feet is how much 0.3 feet is uh well, 1 feet is 300 mm so for 0.3 is almost 1 uh 90 cm uh, 90 mm that is 9 cm going to the next slide this slide tells me uh, what is the equivalent length or l by d ratio so what is done is normally you convert every fitting or every elbow or every t piece into equivalent length and then sum up the total length and then for that total length you calculate from the chart that i showed to you earlier you calculate what is the total pressure drop so this is the way that we estimate pressure drop in each one of the pipes or sub pipes and then add it up at at the maximum 
in one line and that becomes the pressure drop that the pump has to encounter and the pump will need to be sized for that. Thank you for watching. I'm from Ishray Institute of Excellence. We are the education of arm of Ishray and we uh, help students prepare to gain the required knowledge and skill to join the HVAC world. And we also help HVAC professionals to improve their knowledge, improve their working skills so that they could rise higher and achieve better things in their life. Thank you very much. Our telephone numbers are given here. And let me tell you that we are present on YouTube, we are present on LinkedIn, we are present on Facebook, and we have a website. You could access us, reach us through any one of them. We conduct many courses and we conduct also many workshops, professional workshops. You could join them and you could remain in touch with us. Thank you very much.